Welcome, Wayne Thring. Great to have you. Thank you, Clarence, for having me, and uh, good morning to all of the listeners. How would you assess your fortunes as the ACDP in the last elections that you've been t- part of? Well, I think let's just take it a step back. Uh, if one recalls that the ACDP was established in 1993, contested elections in 1994, uh, we had our cynics and skeptics and critics who indicated that the ACDP would not amount to anything. We confounded our uh, critics. And the ACDP indeed got two seats, national seats, three provincial seats, and continued to grow from 1994 to date. If you look at on the ballot papers of 1994, many of the political parties that contested the elections are not there. The ACDP still is after 30 years and will continue to contest elections um, as, as we continued to grow. Uh, the ACDP is a political party also that has structures. One of the Uh, One of the strengths of the ACDP is that we have structures in all nine provinces, so we are not a regionally based uh, political party. Uh, Neither neither are we a party that is a party that is profiles, you know, just and is is dependent on uh, on one leader or the leader. Uh, While we appreciate our leader, Reverend Dr. Kenneth Meshwe, uh, who over the last 30 years uh, has led the party and strengthened the party, grew the party to where he is. Um, we are a, a strength in the sense that we have a number of leaders in the ACDP uh, who are able to hold up his hands um, and assist him in, in, growing, in growing the ACDP. Um, so when one looks at 2014, from 20, 2009 to 2014, it was a, a real political wilderness experience for us because of the effects of uh, floor crossing, um, where we lost membership. Uh, we had seven members of parliament. Uh, at the time, and we lost uh, four um, national members, we, so we, we declined to three. But from 2014 uh, upwards in 20, 2019, we grew our, our base. We now have four national members of parliament. The ACDP is currently the sixth largest political party in, in national parliament. Um, in 2021, that grew from so from a base of 2014 of just over 100,000, we grew up to 146,000 in 2019, and currently uh, in the 2021 elections, uh, it was over 200,000 votes that the ACDP okay. uh, achieved. So it's a we are a political party that is growing. Thank you. I, I think thank you for that assessment. It's appreciated from 100,000 to 146,000 significant growth and then over 200,000. You are the African Christian Democratic Party. Are you a Christian party or a Democratic party? Can you be both? Um, we, yes, well, we, we are. Um, we are both. We are a Christian Democratic Party. And I say that we are both uh, because, one, uh, every political party needs to have a particular worldview. There are those would hold fast to a secular humanistic worldview or liberal worldview. Uh, there are those who have a socialist worldview, um, and there are others, communist and so on, um, while at the same time also espousing democratic values. So our value system, our world value system, um, is, is based on the, the, the Christian uh, biblical worldview, um, and, that we, and that is what we hold fast to. We are democratic in the sense that we, we believe that democracy is the political system that has produced the best results, while it may not be the perfect system, but it is the best system currently that we actually have to, uh, to deal with and to use. Um, and if one looks at our structures, uh, we, we function within a democratic, uh, democratic space where our branches um, are able to nominate and elect members uh, who would go onto the list. The same thing holds for when we have our general conferences. The general conferences are held democratically branches come to a general conference to elect the the leadership, the president, the deputy president, and leaders of the ACDP. Uh, So the processes that we hold to to are democratic in as much as we are a Christian uh, political party. And I also want to indicate that we do not, despite the fact that we've had many people say to us, remove the word Christian from your name because it's offensive. Well, you know, you don't do that to the communists and say remove that because it's offensive, offensive to 80 to 90 percent of South Africans who hold to a Christian view. Um, so why would one want to ask, you know, the ACG? It's, it's not irreconcilable to be a Christian and um, and a communist at the same time as well. But I want to I want to just uh, drill down there for uh, for a little bit. So so can a communist, can a can a, a non-Christian, can an atheist be a part of your party? 
Well, we do. We actually have Muslims that have actually uh, that supported the ACDP. It's, we've got people from a wide spectrum. We've had Muslims come to us to say, listen, we're giving the ACDP our vote uh, because uh, we support your values, you know, um, the moral values that the ACDP holds dear to. Um, there are many South Africans that identify with our policies and our values. By the way, an independent survey, a blind survey, was rather done by the independent newspapers, I think it was about eight, eight to ten years ago, where our policies were compared with the policies of other political parties. And uh, most of the subjects in that particular uh, blind survey identified, about 70 to 80 percent of the subjects identified with the policies of the ACDP. So that, that is an indication that whether one is an atheist, whether one, whatever your cultural or religious background is, if you hold fast to certain values, um, moral values, the ACDP would be a party that you would gravitate to. And that indeed was shown to be the case in that blind survey. So, so the Bible would be your manifesto then? No, the Bible is not our manifesto. The, the Bible serves as a guide. Um, the Bible serves as a guide to just like um, how we live our lives, the Bible serves as a guide to how we live our lives. Uh, the Bible serves as a guide to, uh, to the policies that the ACDP has. Um, so so it, it, is, it is a guide to which we, uh, we adhere to. How, how, do, how do you reconcile uh, human rights and international law uh, with the Bible that guides you? Well, I, I think that if one, if one looks at um, the, the international uh, you talk international rights and and uh, did you say human law? Human rights and international law. You, sorry, human rights, international law. Well, again, I, I think that one looks, one has to look at what it is that the Bible speaks about. Let's take xenophobia for example, uh, <clears throat> and and the you know international rights in terms of protecting foreigners. The ACDP has put out statements, put out statements in in support. Um, of, of, you know, a, a rather against uh, xenophobia uh, and assisting and protecting the foreigners who, uh, those who have actually come to South Africa seeking assistance because that is a, uh, that is a fundamental biblical right. <clears throat> so the ACDP has been upfront and for, uh, forefront in terms of uh, uh, supporting the rights of those who are in South Africa seeking refuge because of wars uh, and other threats to their lives and, and have had to flee to South Africa. We, we, we also know that there are those who attempted to murder uh, the foreigners, and the ACDP you know, very clearly indicates um, that this is a, a travesty and would be uh, a breach of, of uh, human rights. And that, uh, by the way, is in tandem with what the Scripture also teaches us as a, as a guide. Uh, however, we, also, we have also said that we cannot have porous borders and, and our borders open uh, to all and sundry, because that then again would lead to a case where the Bible also, the guidance here is that government has a role to protect its citizens. One of the fundamental rights of any government is the protection of its citizens. Now, if you have open and porous borders, then you have, you know, your, your mafias and your criminal elements coming in, your child and human traffickers coming in, um, you know, murderers and, and, and so on coming into our country. And, and so, again, guided by biblical, uh, biblical values and principles, uh, the ACDP says we cannot have open borders, uh, borders, and there needs to be a process where we guard our borders to prevent the unwanted elements from actually coming into our country. Okay, let's talk about genocide. You've, you've spoken about genocide, and genocide is a hot topic at this moment in time, and the ACDP sure. has waded in on, on that as well. The, the International Court of Justice says that there is a case to be made in relation to uh, Israel's actions in in gaza uh your support mm -hmm. for israel has been unequivocal um just reconcile that position for us i think that again when one looks at the position of the acdp guided by our worldview um <clears throat> our worldview and biblical guidance uh, instructs us to pray for the peace of jerusalem um, we have scripture that says those who bless Israel will be blessed and those who curse Israel will what be What about blessed. Rafa? What if about listen, Gaza? Shouldn't we you, be praying I'm for coming, everybody? I'm yeah. coming to that. Sure, sure, no, I'm, com I'm coming to that. So our, pres our president has actually made, made a statement um, with regards to, uh, to, to the, uh, the, the, the biblical position 
uh, that we have taken, in guided, as I said, we are guided by that worldview, and uh, challenge the South African government in terms of the role that they have played. Now, we have also consistently said that um, our role is also to pray for all. We, we have no enemies. We do not, rev- we do not view uh, the people, the Palestinians, as our enemies. We do not view uh, Israel as an enemy. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that government has to have a, a role where they play a, diploma- a, diploma- a diplomatic role is what government needs to play in, in cases of conflict. If one looks at the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, South African government took a diplomatic view where there was a, a, a non-partisan stance where they neither uh, decried Russia, neither did they uh, go and support Ukraine because they wanted to play a diplomatic role. And the president, um, Ramaphosa, took um, leaders from the African countries to, to attempt to intervene in the Russian-Ukraine war. Now, the ACDP indicated that should have been the same stance that the South African government should have taken, a nonpartisan stance yeah. where you look at being I... an arbitrator of, of peace. Now, the challenge that we have here is not with the Palestinian people. The challenge that we have is with Hamas. Hamas, in fact, has made genocidal, uh, and, and they haven't, not even verbally, they've actually put it in their charter, go and read their charter. Hamas, Hamas has made their intent very clear. Well, it's also they in the charter of the kill, Likud party, kill, from the kill. river to the sea, no. is also in the Likud but, party. I, 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 sure. I want to just understand the principle here. So Hamas and is I, very, I'm, I'm Hamas in agreement with you on the principle. Uh, no, absolutely. Intent. I'm agreeing with you, absolutely. I'm talking about yeah. the principle here, and you correctly identified the principle uh, one response in relation to your Ukraine and another response in relation to Gaza. It's got to be consistent. And that's why the question that I put to you was the International Court of Justice believes that there is a case in relation to accusations of genocide against Israel. Uh, so this is the yes. law that nobody seems to want to abide to in the world. What does the ACDP feel about that? Well, I'm glad that you that you accurately um, uh, quoted the outcome of the ICJ case, because they said that there is a probable cause, um, and that needs to be investigated. So they haven't come out like they did with the Russia-Ukraine war. In Russia, they essentially said that um, that Russia is engaging in genocide. So the ICJ was very really clear with regards to their 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 finding on on Russia. Uh, no, there were two courts, criminal Russia, court, international criminal court, and international court okay. of justice are different courts. So, so, so yes, yes, so my, my apologies. But they did find that there, there was a finding that Russia, there was, there was genocidal intent um, and, and genocidal actions taking place. On, on Now, it was not found with the case that, that there was a probable cause for genocide. That needs to be further investigated. Let, let the law continue to take its course. Um, but what we, we certainly believe that, uh, that South Africa has been uh, um, duplicitous here in, in having a particular policy on one end and, the, and then applying another particular policy. Well, what, is, what, is, what is your policy for peace? Policy. What is your policy for peace that everybody wants to well, see in, uh, well, one of the, in the Middle East? Yeah. yeah. Well, look, one of, one of the roles, uh, very certainly, is that we, we are actually called uh, not just to be peacekeepers, but peacemakers. There's a difference between a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. The United Nations, for example, act as, as peacekeepers. They keep warring factions apart. But peacemakers bring warring factions together and look at actually ending the war. And so the ACDP's perspective is actually, rather than just being peacekeepers, we want to be peacemakers. We want to see an end to the war in Israel and, and, and Gaza. We want to see an end to the war between Russia and Ukraine. And, and in other areas, the, the war that is currently taking place in northern Mozambique, where your, your Islamic or jihadist groups uh, are burning down churches and, and, and killing hundreds of thousands of Christians in northern Mozambique. The same is taking place in, in Nigeria, where Christians uh, are being murdered and mutilated purely because of, of their religious soul. We want to be those who say, how can we actually bring about peace? So, so how, in those, how, how in those, are you? In there's, a, there's a two-state solution uh, that has been mooted uh, in, the, in the 90s. Um, uh, and mooted yeah. in the 90s and frustrated mm-hmm. uh, since it was mooted at Camp David. Um, is that the solution that you, that you believe possible? The, the, the ACDP has been uh, supporting a two-state solution, yes. 
and uh, we will continue to use our influence uh, that we have um, to encourage a two-state solution. It becomes very difficult, however, when, when the one party um, advocates very clearly for the annihilation of another, which is I, what I, Hamas I, I, basically I'm actually does. proposed there's two so, parties doing so exactly the same thing. Sure. Now, so where you have a situation where the two parties actually agree, yes, absolutely. This is what the ACDP would want to see. Okay, so let, let's, let's talk about Jerusalem and East Jerusalem specifically. Any views on East Jerusalem? Well, look, at the moment... Since um, Jerusalem you, you have, is at the heart of your, your position, right? You, you mentioned that sure, as sure. publicly and, and described. We, and we do, yeah, and, and we do believe that Jerusalem ought to be the capital and, uh, and will support. We believe the, the, the fact that Jerusalem becomes the capital of, of Israel. But that does not mean that your, uh, the Muslim group uh, that, is, that is in Israel um, needs, needs to move out. Um, it's, they have, they are, currently, they are residents of Israel, um, and they are protected as residents and citizens of, of Israel. Um, so well, the two-state solution is Jerusalem, premised on uh, Palestine, uh, the, the, the capital being in, in East Jerusalem. You're saying West Jerusalem then becomes the, the capital of, of, of Israel. Well, look, you, you have, you have the, 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 the East Jerusalem um, uh, being, being the capital, Jerusalem being the capital of, of Israel, we, we support uh, Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. We do not, we will not support uh, the moving out of, uh, of, of ethnic groups uh, purely because of their, of their ethnicity or, or their religion. Um, so, but we do support uh, Jerusalem being, being the capital of Israel. That, that would be our position. I think at this moment in time, and uh, the argument has been made that settler communities have um, dispossessed Palestinians of their land. Um, how, how, how do you respond to that allegation? In fact, um, it's more than an uh, allegation. It's a, it's a United Nations uh, position, formal position over a number of years. Again, I think that this is very clearly where you actually need to have a, a diplomatic policy where you are able to negotiate um, and and come out and challenge, um, you know, your uh, your, your government uh, and, and the Israeli government in, in cases like this, uh, <clears throat> where you have situations where uh, there have been residents who are residents of, by the way, um, you know, Muslims and Druids and Christians and Jews, uh, who have been born in Israel um, are protected by the Israeli constitution. Uh, <clears throat> so, so within within the state of Israel, they all have equal uh, equal rights. The challenge has been in in the uh, within the Palestinian areas, um, and a part of what Israel uh, has been doing is in order to protect its communities and in order to protect the state of Israel, where there have been threats and in particular rockets that have been fired and. Uh, and terrorist attacks on the on the state of Israel. Okay. Um, I looking think... at eliminating those particular threats. And so, um, but I but again, I think that we have to have an open door diplomatic policy, an open and uh, hard decision to lay these. An open and hard conversation is absolutely, absolutely. necessary. But absolutely. unfortunately, that Wayne Thring is all we have time for. Thank you, engaging. Uh, in the debate and in the tough matters at stake as well. It is the age of accountability. And uh, yeah, it's something that all of us are required to step up to.